Good afternoon. I'm here with Sally, who's the contract director for Serco, and she's going to share with us a presentation um, talking about the organisation, talking about the different business functions and telling us a little bit about her own career pathway. So I'm going to hand over to Sally, who's going to take control of the screen. Sally, over to you. Excellent. Thank you. Oh, I've gone straight on to uh, the second slide. Uh, I'm going to start with this one, actually. So um, as Lorna said, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about Serco and the company and a little bit about, uh, about what Serco does to give you a bit of context. A little bit about uh, my career journey, uh, how I've ended up uh, what, in doing what I'm doing today. And then uh, a little bit about the maritime services kind of industry and some of the jobs that are available uh, to give you a little bit of an idea about uh, some of the opportunities that uh, that, that that you that you have uh, in, in the maritime industry, which is uh, something that I think is personally really really exciting. Um, so Serco are an international company with about 55,000 uh, people employed uh, within it. So a uh, really big uh, international uh, global company, uh, which is a really interesting space to kind of, to, to be in, to, to work for them. I've worked for them for 15 years. Um, so we mainly deliver services to the government. So we're sort of called a government outsourcer uh, and we deliver services to the government in areas like uh, justice and immigration. And that's things like uh, prisons, prisons and asylum housing. Uh, we work in the health sector. So we uh, run hospitals and we run catering and portering services in, in hospitals. Uh, we have uh, also uh, a big uh, operation within what they call citizen services, and that's sort of services for people. Uh, so that's things like uh, we do quite a lot of uh, refuse collection. So, so uh, the, those sort of uh, bin men services that some of you will see. Uh, and then things like we're quite heavily involved in the uh, track and trace system that the government has been running. So really those uh, services to the government. And then we also work uh, quite a lot in defence. We've got a very big defence uh, area of our business and that's where maritime services sit. So that kind of gives you a little bit of an idea about what, what Serco does. Um, and as I say, I've worked, uh, I've worked for Serco for 15 years, which uh, I don't know if that's quite unusual now, but I think because of the breadth and the different things that they do, uh, there's always been so many different things that I've been able to get involved in. That I've actually sort of uh, never felt the, the need to leave. So um, if I then talk to you a little bit about uh, my job and what I do. So uh, I'm contract director for the provision of marine services. Uh, so what does what does that really mean? So essentially, I'm responsible for a team of about uh, 650 people. And of those 650 people, over 80% of them are afloat on vessels. And then I'm also responsible for all of the management team and all of the support functions that keep us running like a business. Uh, we deliver services uh, in the main to the to the Royal Navy, so we are providing services to them, and it's my job to make sure that we uh, meet all of our obligations, so everything that the Royal Navy needs us to do, I'm there to make sure that that happens, and also to make sure that it happens safely, so as you may be aware, in, in maritime there's a lot of uh, regulation and compliance that you have to, you have to uh, make sure that you are uh, in line with, so it's making sure we deliver our services safely, and then essentially we also run like a little business so I have to make sure that we're making money and paying our people and doing all of the kind of support uh, support to making sure that we deliver our contract to the government so that's a little bit about sort of what my job what my, my job entails um so in terms of how I got to do what I'm doing today, uh, I actually, uh, what would they have said about me at school? Uh, probably a little bit of uh, could do better, uh, probably a little bit chatty and uh, definitely very nosy. That was something that, uh, that came out quite a lot from my sort of school reports. Um, but I, uh, so, so I did, uh, so I, I sort of enjoyed school. It was absolutely fine. I went on to do um, business studies at university. I did that in Bristol. It was something that was really broad uh, and uh, I thought, you know, I could, uh, I was quite interested in, in that. So I went on to do that. And then um, my first job, I went into retail. So I actually worked for House of Fraser in the retail sector and then Ted Baker. Uh, and I qualified as an accountant because that was being offered to me as part of the job that I went in to do uh, as, as sort of a, a studying accountant. So that's where I started. When I came to Serco, I always worked in the support um, function so I was always in finance and commercial so using my uh, my background as an accountant 
Um, and then about five years ago, when I came into the maritime part of the business and worked as a finance person in maritime, I spent about five years getting to know the business and just really, really uh, sort of was so inspired by the maritime part of the business that I wanted to then move into actually running it. So I've uh, sort of moved away from my finance background and into sort of what you'd call frontline operations, actually delivering a service to a customer. So quite a big change. Uh, but but really kind of uh, yeah I didn't want to didn't want to leave the maritime part of the business uh, and and wanted to carry on doing that so it's just a little bit about me and my kind of personal personal career journey so I'm going to see if I can get my uh, next uh, next slide so this is uh, Serco's global maritime footprint so what you might find uh, if you learn a little bit more about the maritime industry is quite often uh, the services and the uh, it's all sort of global because um, it often involves quite a lot of sort of traveling and obviously being an island nation uh, and with such a, an important uh, role that maritime plays for the UK but actually globally maritime is an absolutely enormous industry uh, and it's one of the things that actually can tweak your interest if you're if you if you're sort of wanting to look more widely so um, in terms of uh, Serco's maritime uh, footprint uh, up on the right hand side that's what the UK uh, footprint looks like so as I said I've got about 650 people and we've also got about uh, just over a hundred vessels that support uh, support the Royal Navy and we are based uh, kind of as so I've got people all over all over uh, the UK uh, in the naval base in Portsmouth down in the naval base in Devonport. Uh, we've got two sites up in uh, up in up in Scotland uh, in Greenock and Faslane. So we're on the nuclear naval base in Faslane, and then right up at the top, uh, we also support the British underwater testing uh, centre, which is up um, right up in the Kyle of Lockout. So a very sort of um, uh, uh, geographical spread across the across the country. Um, and then just a little bit about, you know, what do we actually do for the Royal Navy uh, as part of the contract that I look after? So if you think about um, the big naval ships coming in and out of the ports, they can't do that under their own steam. So they need um, a, a towage suite of anything between four and six to bring these really large assets in and out of the ports. So one of the really familiar uh, uh, sort of pictures that you may see is actually the big uh, aircraft carrier Queen Elizabeth with about six tugs around her so those tugs will be Serco tugs uh, so the towage is, is, is a significant part of what we do but then over and above that we do all sorts of other things like um, fuel supplies, uh, ammunitioning supplies, we take uh, pilots on and off or passengers on and off so really it's kind of the support services that the Navy need when they're in port uh, in, in those areas. And then we've got a, a wider, what we call our out of port service, which is two main, mainly two larger vessels, uh, and they go out, they go worldwide, su worldwide supporting the navy in their training. So at the moment, uh, I've got um, SD Victoria, which is one of our uh, large worldwide training ships, and she is uh, on the on 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 her way to uh, Key West in Florida to support the navy training. So uh, we do uh, sort of you know we're focused both uh, in the UK footprint, but also we go we go worldwide so it's really fascinating uh, for the people that come into our business to be able to kind of see the the span of support that we provide to the Royal Navy and then more widely across America Canada and Australia we've got uh, some similar contracts so our contract in Australia is relatively similar to the one that we've got in the UK in that it supports the Royal Australian Navy and its harbour movements and its training and then in the US and Canada we actually have um, a slightly more of a design engineering emphasis and sort of through life support in terms of uh, the, the the support to both the, the US and the Canadian Navy so again a government focus for us but a, a worldwide a worldwide footprint. So I'm just going to go on to uh, the next slide, which I think is going to build actually uh, as, I, as I talk. But one of the things that I think it's really, uh, it's really exciting and one of the things that's worth talking about is demonstrating the range of careers that there are in, in maritime. And so as this builds, you can see that here I've separated it into um, ashore roles. So, you know, the, uh, you can broadly separate this into sort of uh, feet on the ground, as in uh, land uh, and a float role. So, you know, actually being on a vessel. 
And then on, uh, on the other side, you've then got the support roles and the functions that sit all of around that and sort of enable that to happen. Um, so I won't read through each uh, individual role. And actually, the next slide that I've got talks a little bit about the career path that you can have in, in, in a float role. But it, I'll just talk a little bit about the Assure roles and, and what that covers. So for us as an operation, not only do we need to have the people who are driving the boats, we also have to make sure we've got um, the technical skills to keep them keep them working. We've actually got quite a, a mixed fleet and some of it's quite old. So there's some really uh, important engineering capability that we need to have to keep all of that going. And then you've got all of the things like uh, operations managers and controllers. So we deliver about 14,000 tasks a year and making sure we've got the right vessels in the right place with the right people. Uh, and then some of these are really people jobs, you know, making sure that uh, everybody understands what they're doing and, and how they're going to do it. So uh, there's some of the, the Assure roles. And then uh, I talked a little bit about how important the health, safety uh, and, and quality piece is, but certainly you know, health and safety and that regulatory compliance and making sure you're doing stuff in, li in line with the, the, the maritime law is really important. Uh, and then we've got other things like divers, so uh, linked with the kind of the, the maritime industry. Uh, often you have to get people to go and look at the underside of hulls, or you might send them to look at a particular mooring. And so we've actually got a team of divers, an absolutely great team of divers. Um, and so that kind of covers some of the some of the the ashore roles. I'll talk a bit about the afloat roles in the next slide, and then the support functions. You know, if you've got an interest which maybe sits in HR, so you're really interested in, in what makes people tick and how to get people organised, you know, there, there are support functions that are uh, really critical to getting this uh, kind of operation up and running as well. And then things like, you know, IT support, uh, health and safety, uh, growth. So there's a lot of new business requirements. So all of those kind of standard business uh, kind of uh, capability that you might have in also different things, ha you know, ha happen in this industry and, and, and are also really critical for uh, the maritime industry to continue to grow and to be part of kind of the uh, the, the future uh, the future of this country so um that's a little bit about uh, the, the variety of roles so if i go uh on to the next slide hang on a second there's a oh there's a few extra ones popping onto the bottom of there so uh, this is uh, really kind of a picture which talks about the pathway that you can go from a deck apprentice all the way to a master unlimited and uh, along that uh, scale there that's sort of the amount of years but what this is um, kind of really mainly trying to show is that there is quite a well-defined career path if you want to join and if you want to progress through that and uh, most maritime organizations and industries will do this as part of sort of you know an apprenticeship and then on the job training so it's really well defined uh, and all of the training that you can do is is on the job and uh, based on the experience that you are gaining uh, at sea and and through the other kind of um uh, those avenues as well so so that kind of ability to be able to do a job uh, and to uh, kind of advance through a career and and be paid whilst you're doing that um, so a deck apprentice will come on uh, on board with with a very little experience just a, a little bit of enthusiasm and commitment is is what is asked of sort of that apprentice level uh, and you would be learning things like um basic rope handling basic seamanship skills uh basic fire safety uh and and there's there's as i say there's quite a defined things that you would do as a, as an apprentice to to get those basic seagoing skills and that takes approximately two years and then what you move on to next is an able seafarer so you just become more com more competent and more experienced and you may be looking after a deck apprentice and sharing your experiences uh, and that can take anywhere between four years and some of this will depend on the size of vessel that you would want to go and do it on uh, so it, you would then move on to boat masters uh, and masters and again some of these are whether you want to work on in coastal waters or if you want to work worldwide uh, you could go on to be a chief mate so we're looking at sort of 10 years in and then ultimately if you wanted to go all the way to the end of that pathway you could become what's called a master unlimited and that means that you are competent uh, at operating any vessel of any size anywhere in the world uh, and, and the quite useful thing about this 
this is that you can sort of stop and start it and you can structure it in a way that suits you and uh, whether whether that's uh, your own personal circumstances or your kind of uh, how far you want to go with it so I just wanted to give that kind of that that idea around the structure of the particular kind of apprentice to, to master role. And I think these uh, presentations are going to become available to you so so you can sort of have a look at that if, if you want to. Um, so this is really just a little bit about uh, some, uh, some some information that we've taken from uh, our apprentices. So we do run an apprenticeship scheme at Serco. In fact, we, we run an apprenticeship scheme quite broadly in Serco across the whole business. But particularly in Maritime, we've been taking on uh, deck apprentices and technical apprentices uh, for the last few years. And we've got some really amazing stories about uh, people who have started as an apprenticeship and then gone through and are still working within the company and, and have really, uh, really valued kind of that experience and are also really keen to talk about it to encourage other people to look at the maritime industry and to look at apprenticeships as a really good, a really good career opportunity. Uh, so I won't read out all of those um, particular sort of statements, but uh, really sort of highlighting the fact that you have got the chance to earn money as you're uh, as you're working uh, I think it really appeals particularly working uh, sort of a float that you're not 100% office based so people that want to be out and about using your hands and kind of getting that a, a different kind of, of role and working as part of a team I think that's the other thing that really comes through because when you're uh, working on vessels you know the people around you uh, are really really important for your safety uh, but also it's just that working part part of a team and frankly everybody wants to enjoy uh, you know enjoy their job you know you spend an awful lot of time at work so finding something that you uh, you want to do is uh, is 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 really uh, is really valuable really uh, so I think uh, that's my that is my last slide so the only other thing that I was going to sort of offer is a bit of a, a, a couple of closing statements um if you're interested in things like, uh, you know, the, the kind of the future environmental impact, one of the other things that, uh, you know, the maritime industry is having to think very carefully about is the impact uh, of the carbon emissions. So uh, if that's a slant uh, that you think, uh, you know, is really important and, and some of looking at the principles of things that are important to you as a person should drive what you want to go into at work, because ultimately you'll end up really enjoying it. So maritime industry have got a long way to go in terms of understanding their environmental impact and then the other thing is that if you're you know if as an example you're really interested in uh, in IT or in you know kind of like future innovation uh, that's another area that the maritime industry with autonomous vessels and you know really interesting sonar technology uh, it, it, you know if technology is your thing the maritime industry have got uh, a huge amount of, uh, of, of technology and innovation with, within the space to ultimately you know uh, perhaps lessen the impact of, of the environment as well so uh, that's the other point and it really is something that is open to everybody. So uh, it is uh, historically, I think it's been a very male dominated industry, but that is starting to change. And whether you're looking at um, a float roles or a shore roles, that, the, the, that is absolutely uh, open to, to everybody. So male and female, uh, that gender diversity is, is starting to change uh, within the environment. And I think that's really, really important. So I would encourage anybody who's interested uh, to, to really, really think about that. That. Um, and uh, and I think then sort of closing thoughts just on careers in, in general is just, you know, be really inquisitive. Uh, there are lots of doors uh, in lots of different areas uh, that, that will be open to you. So, you know, talk to people about it, ask questions, uh, have an open mind and actually, you know, your enthusiasm will uh, and uh, you know that is what will get you an awful lot of, a lot of the way uh, your your attitude to uh, kind of uh, you know having a go and, and being interested is is something that all workplaces are looking for so uh, thank you that's uh, that's kind of what i wanted to share with you and uh, if anybody's got any questions i'm sure that uh, uh, they can feed them through and uh, would be more than happy to answer any of them thank you very much